Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to be doing something very exciting. I'm back in the garage and I'm going to be painting for the first time in forever. I'm so excited to get my hands on a paintbrush again and get to transform a couple of pieces. So I thought I would take you along with me and these are the pieces we're going to be doing today. Um, we picked these up at auctions recently and I've just kind of been accumulating things so I could do one big painting project. And I have this, which is just, I guess, a, an old plant stand that is not looking too great, but we're going to make it look beautiful. And then I have this little guy, and this is an old printer's tray, and somebody had actually used this to glue in little tea animals, like little ceramic figurines you got in tea, um, and so it's full of glue. I'm not going to be painting this. I am going to be scraping the glue out though. And then I think I'm going to oil it to bring out the beauty of the wood and hang a little wreath on it. That's my plan for this guy. And then I have this back here, which I picked up at an auction for, I think, I think this was seven bucks. I think this was five bucks. And this one, I'm not sure Ethan picked this one up. So I'll have to ask him how much that was. But um, for this back here, I think I'm just going to dry brush it with some white paint and then we're gonna give it a heavy distress, and I think that's gonna look really good, so we'll see. All right, so let's get started and see how these projects turn out. All right, so I think I'm gonna start with this piece because it is probably gonna need several coats of paint, so I figured we'd start with this and see what happens. I am gonna be using milk paint. If you've never used milk paint before, um, we've used it before on our channel. It's one of my favorite paints to use actually. It comes as a powder and we get it from either Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint or Fusion makes a milk paint. Um, it's just called Fusion Milk Paint. And I believe they're actually manufactured by the same company. Um, and I think I don't have enough of one color, so I think I'm gonna mix them together and we're gonna see what happens. It's gonna be like a blue-green color. I think a lot of people are intimidated by milk paint because you do have to um, mix it yourself from a powder, but really milk paint is the only thing we found that gives that true um, old world kind of crusty paint feel. That doesn't sound, that doesn't sound good, um, but basically that's what you're going for when you paint with milk paint, kind of like a crusty, chippy, um, looks like it's been painted five or six different times over the past several decades. Um, that's the kind of look you're going through for with milk paint. So uh, that's what I'm gonna use with this and I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's super easy. So, um, like I said, you have to mix it yourself. I don't have enough of one color that I want. So I'm gonna mix two and I'm gonna actually mix Miss Mustard Seeds Luck It's Green with this um, Fusion Monterey. And we're gonna see how that turns out. I think it's gonna be nice to mix those two colors together. We'll see. It's super easy to mix milk paint um, because it starts as a powder. It You just put both the powders together and mix it with the water and you're good to go. So when I am done using my milk paint, like last time I used this, I taped it up on the top and that's because the powder, there's a zipper here, like as a block top, um, but the powder gets stuck in there and it doesn't quite seal right. So I always just tape it off and then cut it down. It just means that I'm not going to lose any paint. It's not going to fall out and spill everywhere. And I already have my water in here. And a trick that you can use is to start with warm water. That makes it easier to actually mix your paint. And then I just kind of eyeball it until you get the consistency you want. It should be like melted ice cream. Another trick is let it sit for a little bit, mix it together, let it sit for maybe three or four minutes, mix it again, and then you'll see your true consistency because sometimes it takes a while for the water to really absorb into that powder. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the darker color, um, but this color is looking pretty good. All right, so I have this all mixed up and while I'm waiting for it um, to just make sure that it's absorbed all the water and that I don't need to add more water or more paint, 
I'm going to let that sit here and I am just going to get this guy dusted down because he is filthy. All right, so this is good to go. And I almost forgot one thing. We also need, and I only have a little bit left, so I'm hoping it's enough. Um, it's called Ultra Grip Bonding Agent. And it's from Fusion. Miss Mustard Seed makes one too. That one is called, I'll have to put it in the notes because I can't remember what it's called. Um, but Miss Mustard Seed makes one, Fusion makes one. You can use either one. And it just makes sure that the paint adheres without all chipping off because the milk paint is made to chip off your piece. And for a piece that's shiny like this, if I don't put the bonding agent in, it's just gonna completely chip off and we won't have any paint left. So I'm gonna put the bonding agent in and we're gonna hope that it's enough. I'm actually turn this upside down and let some more come out and we'll mix that up in here later. I don't mind if it chips a little, I just don't want it all coming back off. And if you have a piece that's not shiny at all, like this piece is super shiny, it's got a glossy finish on it. If you have a piece that's not shiny, you really don't need to put that in. Um, I'm just doing it because this piece is so shiny. All right, and then it's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna start painting. I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. Um, I actually think that one coat might be enough. All I have to do is wait for it to dry a little and then I'm gonna turn it over and kind of touch up these feet a little bit more. Um, other than that, I think it's pretty much ready to go. I'll let it dry, we'll come back and we'll check it out. In the meantime, I'm gonna wrap up my brush and my paint with Saran Wrap so that it doesn't dry out and we're gonna start on the next project. All right, we are gonna start on project number two. And for that, we are gonna be working on this shelf. And like I said, I'm gonna be dry brushing it. If you aren't familiar with the dry brushing technique, basically it's just what it sounds like. You are gonna be taking a dry brush, completely dry. Ooh, and also dusty. <laughs> We're gonna be taking a dry brush and then I'm gonna be using Fusion Mineral Paint. It is hard to see because there's paint splattered on it, but it's the color casement. And you could do any paint. I mean, really whatever you like to use will work. Um, you could even use wall paint. This just happens to be what I have. And I really like to do um, white when I'm dry brushing. It's kind of just a rustic, more rustic, um, cottagey, farmhouse, bohemian. I mean, it could fit in anything like that. Um, but white really works really well for dry brushing. So you need a brush, you need some paint and I always get a paper towel so that I can blot off any extra paint. So let's go. So like I said, what I'm gonna do is start with the dry brush. I'm just gonna dip it very, very lightly. I don't want a lot of paint on there. In fact, we're gonna get as much of it back off as possible. And that's why I have this in case we need it. Um, but this looks pretty good. And then we're just gonna start by lightly, very, very lightly brushing the paint on. I'm pretty happy with this piece. Um, if you saw me kind of going back over spots, that's because the wood on this was pretty raw. I don't think it had like any kind of a sealer on it um, before I painted it. So the wood kind of was soaking up the paint as it was drying. So I just kind of went back and touched up some areas where there was more wood showing through than I wanted. Um, but I'm gonna let this dry. We're gonna move on to our next project. And again, we'll come back to this guy and give him a good sanding when he's dry. All right, let's move on to the next piece. 
All right, guys, we're going to move on to our very last piece. And for this, I'm not going to be using any paint, but I am going to be using one of our very favorite products. It is called hemp oil. Um, we get this from Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint. I'm sure you get it from other places as well. But this really does work miracles on wood. So if you're going to be keeping something a natural wood tone and you just kind of want to take a vintage piece and give it a little bit more life, and revive it a little bit this stuff is perfect you can also use it as a sealer over the milk paint um, over their fusion mineral paint it just works wonders for a lot of different things so we're going to be cleaning up this little um, printer's tray behind me and then i'm going to be using this with some just blue shop towels whatever you got rags and that's about it first we're going to scrape off the glue and then i'll show you how this hemp oil works all right, so like I said, this actually has hot glue stuck to it, so I'm just going to use um, a scraper, and I have a flathead screwdriver here in case I need it, and we're going to scrape off the glue, and that's going to be the first part of this project. I think I have most of it out. Um, there's a little bit of remnant stuck, but I think the oil might help get it out. So we're gonna see. All right, so for the hemp oil, all you do is basically just put it on a rag and rub it into the wood. We've also before put it on, um, put it in a spray jar, which I actually have. This has hemp oil in it, and it's nice for things like this, where you're trying to get into little tight corners because you can just kind of spray it in. Of course, this has been sitting long and isn't going to spray for me, but it's a nice idea. So you can always do that too. Put it in a spray jar and then use it that way. See that right here? This is where we've hemp oiled. That's where we have not old dry wood, pretty hemp oiled wood. So when you hemp oil something, it just kind of brings back the natural um, beauty of the wood and gives it a little bit of new life without something as drastic as painting or staining it. So that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring it back over to the table and I'll show you when it's done. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do to this piece for right now. I'm gonna let the hemp oil dry, and then I think I have a little wreath I'm gonna put on here. We'll see. So this is gonna dry, my other projects are still drying, and we'll be back in a little bit and finish them up. All right, we're back and it's time to finish up these projects. They're all dry and they're ready to be distressed and have the final touches put on them. So let's get working on that. And then we will stage these pieces and see how they turned out and you guys can let me know how you like the before and afters. All right, let's finish up here. The first thing that we're going to finish up is this plant stand, which as you can see is dry. I only needed one coat. I did off camera finish up the feet. When the top dried, I flipped it over and made sure that the feet were um, completely painted. So that's done. And now I'm just gonna take some sandpaper. Let's see what this is, 220. And we're just gonna distress it. So you can use sandpaper on this, or you could use like a palm sander if it had more of a flat area. Uh, we've done that before on pieces that we painted with milk paint. It works out just fine. You just need to be careful that you don't go too crazy or else you'll sand all the paint off. So that's all. So let's sand this down and see how it turns out. Okay, so now that we have this distressed and I have it looking how I want it and I'm happy with the way it looks, um, there's a couple things you can do to seal your project when you're using milk paint. One of them is Fusion does make a product and Miss Mustard Seed makes a product called um, Tough Coat and you can tough coat this whole thing. It'll make a really nice, um, just solid sealer for it and protect the paint from chipping off more. That's especially good if it's really chippy. This piece isn't super chippy. It is a little chippy, 
Um, so we don't want to use hemp oil, which is another option. If you have a piece that's not chipping at all, you can use hemp oil and just seal it up with the hemp oil. It's beautiful when you put hemp oil on. The hemp oil really just darkens up the color and makes it gorgeous. But for this pro um, project, I'm going to need something a little bit sturdier than that. So I think I'm going to choose to do Miss Mustard Seeds Furniture Wax. And to do that, we're just going to use some shop towels again. You could use a rag, anything like that that's not going to make it linty. And we're just going to wipe it on and then buff it back off. And that'll also darken up the color and make it just really pretty and give it a little bit of a, a protective coat on it. So let's do that now. All right, so I have the whole thing waxed, I'm pretty sure, but I got all the spots. I've been going back and kind of buffing as I go to, um, but now I'm gonna take a clean cloth and specifically go back and buff the piece and get off any excess wax that might just be sitting on it and kind of shine it up. So to do that, you just go back and I try to do a circular motion and just kind of buff it up just like you would with a car. I think we're good. I think this is done. I'm going to find a little topper and we're going to put that back on. I'm not sure if I like the silver with this. I'm still debating. You can use, there's a product called Rub and Buff. That's like um, a little tube of wax. You can get it in all different metallic colors and um, you can just rub that on and it'll change the color. But for right now, we're just going to leave it silver until I decide. I don't want to go back on. It's going to be difficult for me. Well, there we go. So other than the top, which I'm still debating on, this guy is all done. Let's move on to the next project. Okay, this is our little printer's tray. And it is nice and darkened up from the oil, looking beautiful. And I was just thinking, I had this little wreath and some burlap. I'm just going to take a tiny little nail and we're going to stick it right there and it's going to be our finished project. So let me grab a nail and my hammer. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a little tiny nail and we're just going to stick that right through the burlap here and that should work out well. up the burlap a little bit and we're good to go. Another project is finished. We're just going to put that little guy right there for now. And the longer I stand here and look at this plant stand, the more I want to change that little silver holder on the top. So I grabbed our little tube of rubber buff. I'm going to come over and show it to you and we're going to change the top on this. Can you see that? That is the product, and it just basically looks like that. So we're gonna put a teeny bit, you don't even really need much, it's just a teeny little bit on this um, paper towel, and we're gonna change the whole top of this. All right, so all you do is take a little tiny bit on a paper towel, and you just dab it on. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to need to get just a teeny bit more, but it is completely changing the color of that. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. It looks a lot better in person. And I should have put gloves on because once this gets on your fingers, it never comes off. So that's going to be fun later. All 
All right, guys, last project. Here we go. Here's our piece that we dry brushed. As you can see, it is not a solid coat of paint. It's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. It looks just like I was imagining it. Now we're just going to soften it up with a little bit of sanding. So I'm going to grab some 220 again, and we're going to sand this guy. Again, you could use a palm sander. That would probably be easier, but also you need to kind of be careful because you don't want to take too much paint off. There's not a lot of paint on this. Okay, that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna do a lot of sanding to this piece. Um, you don't need to seal it. It's pretty good the way it is. Fusion does not need to be sealed. You can if you want. Um, I think I'm gonna do a little hemp oil on this just for the sake of darkening up the wood under the paint. Other than that, you really don't need to do anything. This is just an extra step I'm choosing to do for the aesthetics. I think it's gonna look nice. All right, that is literally it for this piece. This is probably the easiest of all the projects. Throw that over there. Um, <clears throat> it was like 10 minutes of painting, two minutes of hemp boiling, no big deal. So I'm gonna take all my pieces and we're gonna stage them a little bit um, and take a picture and I'll show you what the afters look like of everything and do a comparison side by side of the before and after. I hope you liked this um, video and I hope it inspired you because really with a little bit of paint, a little bit of elbow grease, you can turn inexpensive pieces that you find at auctions, at thrift stores, at yard sales into something brand new that fits in with your decor. So thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.